Welcome to the second video of this series. This video is about the problem add two numbers. Today we'll go over what the problem is and how to solve it. After that, we'll analyze our solution for its runtime and space complexity. Let's jump right into it. Solving this problem would involve working with linked lists. Although this is marked as medium difficulty, it's actually not that hard if you're already familiar with linked lists. Let's start off by reading the prompt. You are given two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. The digits are stored in reverse order and each of their nodes contain a single digit. Add the two numbers and return the sum as a linked list. Focus on the words non-empty and reverse order here. Non-empty meaning that there is at least one node in your linked list. Reverse order says that your linked list is in the reverse order of the actual digits it represents. So if your linked list has nodes 3, 4, and 6 in that order, the actual digits are 6, 4, 3, which is 643. Let's look at an example here. You're given these two linked lists. One has nodes 5, 3, and 4. Other has nodes 8, 2, and 1. These are the numbers it would represent. Now here we have to add these two numbers and return its digits in reverse linked list. If you want to practice, pause the video here for 5 minutes and come back. To solve this problem, let's first add these two numbers. 5 plus 8 would equal 13. 3 would go down and 1 would be carried. 1 plus 3 plus 2 would equal 6. 4 plus 1 would equal 5. Notice that you're adding in the reverse order here. This is exactly the way our linked lists are given. So we can just try to add from our linked list itself. 5 plus 8 would be equal to 13. So 3 would go into the first node and 1 would be carried. So we take 1 plus 3 plus 2 and that would be 6 and which would go into the second node. 4 plus 1 would equal 5. And that would be our final resulting linked list. Now let's implement this in code. So here we have a function add two numbers and it takes in both of our lists as parameters. At the end of this function, we're going to return list, which is going to be called result that would hold the sum from both of these lists. We also define a pointer called a result pointer, which would be the one to traverse through this result link list. After that, we'll define a value called carry, which would help us when adding these two link lists. To traverse through these lists, we'll use while loop and we'll check if either of their current values exist. Instead of this, we'll first add our carry value from our previous statement. Next, first we'll check if our first list has some value in it. If it does, we'll add this to our sum and traverse to its next node. We'll do the same for our list 2. After that, we'll check if there's any carry value for our current sum. If so, we'll add it to our carry variable defined above. Next, we'll create a new node for a result linked list and add the sum to it. After that, we'll traverse through the next node in our result list. After this while loop completes, if there is any carry value that's remaining, we'll also add this as a new node in our result. Once that's done, we're going to return the result next value. This is because notice when we first define a result pointer, it points to the first value. But in our while loop, we'll always create a new node and add it to the next one. So that means in our result linked list, the first node would be zero and the, fa the actual values would start from the second one. Therefore, we're going to return the result next value. Let's now analyze our code. So in our function, we are traversing through two linked lists. If the length of first one is n and the length of second one is m, our runtime complexity would be O of n plus m. Our space complexity for this algorithm would be none. Why none? That's because we're not storing anything that we're using in our algorithm. You might say that the linked list that we're returning is actually being stored in our function. But notice that this is actually not something that we're using for our algorithm to function. Therefore, we don't count this in our space complexity. And hence, the space complexity becomes none.